and welcome back to another episode of Underdog Podcast. Now it's a happy Wednesday. It's hump day. God damn it. Wednesday, right? Yeah, it's Wednesday. Whew. <laughs> I had to do a double take at the computer to make sure I had a date and the day right. I didn't want to do a podcast on uh, uh, talking about daylight savings time. I may or may not. I might just talk a little bit about it. This shit is fucking annoying, man. I, last night, I'm sitting on the toilet in my great thinking spot <laughs> in my so-called man cave, <laughs> my, my hideout from the kids and the cat. I'm sitting on the toilet, and I'm just like, damn it, why am I still awake? Well, I'm not even tired yet. And then it hits me. It's like, oh, that's right, because just this time last week, well, it wouldn't be this time. It would be 10 o'clock. But now it's 11 o'clock. I ended up going to bed until around like 1230, which is super late for me. Coming from someone that goes to sleep at 930. I get about eight, nine hours of sleep a night. I, I can't help it. I, that's how my body works. And then I go check on the kids and they're still away. My son is reading his book and his eyes are turning red. I'm like, guy, go to sleep. And he's like, oh, yeah, I was trying to read this book. And then my daughter comes out. I was like, yeah, I'm still wide awake. I'm like, see, man, this goddamn sa- uh, daylight savings time, which is something... I believe Florida already passed, but they can't do it until the rest of the, the, the country does it, where as far as the federal government, I'm like, oh, God, what's the point of passing shit if you got to wait on everybody else? I guess it's good to be the first one out the door. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. I'm like, oh, this, it's time change. It's annoying, man. I think I ended up making dinner around 8 o'clock. I started I start around like 730, which is usually late for me because I got a good anywhere between 645 and 730 before the kids come looking at me like, hey, dad. Ooh, you know, where's the fucking food at, guy? <laughs> and they'll walk out there and they look at it, they just walk out, look at me, and then go back. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, masters. If I don't have your food yet, I apologize. I apologize for being late. And they come at me and shit. I'm like, man, sorry. But yeah, this daylight savings time is, is, is it's really starting to be annoying. It's starting to be annoying. All right, you guys see today's topic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get right into this because... Ugh. I can see myself talking for a bit. You gotta be shitting me. And then I go to a black screen. Hold on. Okay, that's right. I did set this up and I had to close it out. All right. So, oh, we're, you want to talk about a contradiction out the ass? Watch, watch. Pay attention. Pay attention to this one. So, there's an article here from Zero Hedge. It says Biden says Putin, a killer, quote unquote killer. <laughs> It doesn't have a soul. Uh, it was another direct quote after U.S. Intel assesses interference. So my first thought is, you know, obviously the 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 whole call the so-called interference and stuff like that. But my my really first thought is, how can Biden call someone else a killer? Then again, I guess it takes one to know one. All right, <laughs> like. <laughs> it makes you think about it, how he says it. It says, after a much anticipated and hyped federal investigation, an intelligence report into Russia linked cyber attacks found, <laughs> uh, what did it find? Found the Kremlin mounted an online interference campaign related to the 2020 election. Now, remember, remember what I just said. Pay attention and listen to what I just said. The Kremlin said, after. An intelligence report found the Russia linked cyber attacks found the Kremlin mounted an online interference campaign related to the 2020 election. So what does that mean, right? That means foreign interference in the election, correct? Foreign election interference, foreign entity, another country's government, foreign election interference that's what they're saying russia linked cyber attacks remember that and then it says uh president biden said in a bombshell abc news interview that he agrees uh, vladimir putin is a killer and that he's going to pay the price are you gonna go kill him i don't think that sounds like a good idea you notice how this war machine is gearing up again you hear things about what they're saying to uh, uh, Kim Jong-un over in North Korea. And he's like, hey, y'all stop fucking around our waters and stuff. It's funny how one president had, was able to go to North Korea and talk to the guy and stuff like that. And he started to have a change of heart or at least an appearance of it. But then 
you go somewhere else and then you go to another so-called president this guy ain't the president at all but whatever you go to him and then he's ready to gear up again like oh no you know we gotta say hard sanctions on russia or we gotta go out to north korea and stuff but we just ignore china we just ignore china and i'm talking about china and that's talking about war either i'm talking about once again economics yeah, economics china wants to dry our u.s economy up why would they not i mean if it boosts their economy especially with communism so that communism only really happens at the height of capitalism because why because capitalism economy free markets that competitiveness boosts up production value when you have communism come in People, so they say people don't necessarily have the psychological incentives to work and stuff, whatever. Not going into that whole separate topic. So it says CNN reports sanctions are likely coming, specifically targeting, quote unquote, people close to Russia, President Vladimir Putin as soon as next week. So sanctions, I presume, will be uh, financial sanctions. Once again, all that does is crush the value of the United States dollar. Because other countries are tired of dealing with United States dollar when you're talking about foreign exchange, trade, markets, and stuff like that. Because it's used as a weapon by the United States government. Oh, we're going to put sanctions on you because we know you trade and deal in the U.S. dollar. So we can, we can affect your economy. Nobody wants to deal with that shit. I don't blame other countries. Be like, hey, why would you want to deal with that? You see, this takes the value of the dollar down. Because you're using it as a weapon. But I get it. I understand the politics and I understand the strategic mind games and all this other stuff, wherever the end all in, uh, goal is. Still, it's kind of shady when you think about it. It's kind of, it's kind of fucked up. Uh, okay, so it talks about a pre recorded interview, but there's actually an audio clip. So this is from Good Morning America, and this is, uh, was it George Stephanopoulos? Uh, I believe that that's his name, how you say it. Whatever, fuck it. Let's just listen to him. Uh, I got to prepare myself. I got oh, I got to prepare myself because I, I know I'm going to laugh, man. I, I can't help. But because it's not Biden, we don't know who the hell that person is, man. For Putin authorized operations during the election to under, denigrate you, support President Trump, undermine our elections, divide our society. So then I got to make sure I pause and talk over. Otherwise, I get copyright claims on YouTube. So d d d denigrate and all of other stuff and basically discredit Joe Biden. He's saying that the Russian, the, the Russian government hacked into, <laughs> the Russian government hacked into the United States uh, cyber security network or cyber networks, uh, whatever. And they interfere with the election. It's, it's, it's hard for me to say this because it's like, it's the same shit over again, Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia, 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 Russia. You thought Russia was done, you know, when the Soviet Union crumbled and the Soviet Union became fucking Russia. You, so you thought you thought that was not necessarily the end all be all of communism and stuff, but hey, you, you put up a good fight and you, you know, took out one of the, the headed monsters or whatever. Let's, let's put it like that. It's interesting to keep saying this thing because when Trump won the, the election the first time, it was Russia, Russia, Russia. And even then, I was like, uh, here we go. This is, sounds like suspicious. And I ain't trust Trump. I still don't trust him. I don't trust nobody. I trust myself. Sometimes. <laughs> but I can see and pay attention to people's actions and stuff. I can tell when someone is really worried about America and when someone is really faking it. There's a lot of fake people out there, man. You know. You know you got those fake friends. You know you got those fake family members. You know you got those fake coworkers. There's a lot of fake people, man. And not fake and in the sense that they're trying to be nice. They're just fake, just fake themselves. Because they're, they're trying to hide who they really are. Probably because they don't like who they really are. Sorry to break it to you. What price must he pay? He will pay a price. I, we had a long talk. Come on, bro. Look, look at this man's eyes, man. Look at this man's eyes. I got, I got a sleepy eye, so I understand. I know what it's like, man. I think it's my left eye, yeah. Yeah, it's the left eye. A little, some nerve damage stuff. A little sleepy eye, man. You can't... Look, look at this shit, man. Look at this shit. You, you know those guys... You, Everybody's neck is so tight in these ties. I hate ties, man. I don't know. I hate ties. I don't can't breathe, man. Button up shirts, always tight and stuff. Whatever. You know, I we I, I know him relatively well, and I, the conversation started off. I said, I know you, and you know me. 
if I establish this occurred, then be prepared. You said you know he doesn't have a soul. I did say that to him, yes. And to and his response was, we understand one another. I wasn't being a wise guy. I was alone with him in his office. <laughs> that okay, okay. He said he wasn't being a wise guy. I was alone him, with him in his office. I looked at him and said, you don't have a soul. And he said, all right, we understand each other. Isn't that kind of personal? Did she, she be sharing details of a personal conversation like this? Does it, is this even about some government shit? Is this about countries and stuff like that? Like, it's kind of personal, ain't it? And this goes to anybody, any president, any whatever, elect, so-called elected official. This is kind of a personal conversation, but whatever. Let's go with it. How it came about. It was when President Bush had said, I've looked in his eyes and saw a soul. I said, look in your eyes, and I don't think you have a soul. And look back at me, he said, we understand each other. Look, most important thing. <laughs> Basically, he said, well, yeah. If I don't have a soul, I know you ain't got no soul because you ain't who you are. <laughs> That's what he, he, who literally just sat there and said, yeah, we understand each other, meaning you don't have no soul either. Meaning you're just a puppet. And maybe Putin is agreeing, yeah, I'm just a puppet too. I'm just here for show as well. I don't know. I don't know that much about Putin and Russia to necessarily to have a, a comment or opinion on it. I haven't looked that much into it. Because I, I don't really care that much. I, I should, though. I should, though. It's on me. In my experience, and I've dealt with an awful lot of them over my career, is just know the other guy. So you know Vladimir Putin. You think he's a killer? Mm-hmm. I do. So what price must he pay? <laughs> mm -hmm. The price he's going to pay, well, you'll see. Oh, shit. Get the fuck out of here. That looks fake. That looks fake. God damn it. I don't have a two monitor set up so I can't pull up full screen like that. That looks fake. It looks like he's digitally imposed because you can tell he doesn't fit in naturally with the background. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe it's a stretch because I seen something and I shared it on Gab, on my Gab account. And it... But man, you watch enough movies and stuff, man. You can tell some CGI if you pay close attention. It that doesn't look like it does. It, it's trying to see, make it seem like it's focusing on him, and the background is out of focus. But something's just that doesn't look right, man. It doesn't look right at all. It looks like oh, okay, whatever. Certainly. I'm not gonna. There's by the way, we ought to be able that old that trite expression walk and chew gum at the same time. There are places where it's in our mutual interest to, to uh, work together. That's why I renewed the START agreement with him. That, ha that occurred while he's doing this. That, but that's overwhelming in the interest of humanity that we diminish the prospect of a nuclear exchange. I don't think they were supposed to zoom out like that. Let's, let's go back. Because does it look like that with him? Let's see. No, I don't see nothing. I'm trying to see does it look like with the... the Stephanopoulos, whatever his name is, is doing an interview, but they don't really zoom out on him. Whatever, whatever. Pay attention to what he's saying, though. So the whole key point of me sharing this because they're talking about election interference by Russia, correct? As well as they're talking about uh, he's calling uh, Putin a killer and he knows and blah, blah, and all this other stuff. <laughs> and it's like, okay, guy, we... If you say so, we'll go with it. I guess and anybody's really paying attention. Nobody's probably watching that. I mean, come on, look, look, look at this shit. Look at this shit, man. This was posted early this morning, and at that time it had two hundred ninety-four likes, one hundred forty-eight comments, and doesn't show the number of retweets. If I click on, it, will it pull up the Twitter page? No, it's gonna pull up the zero head article. Oh, okay, no, it'll show the Twitter. No, I don't want this though. I want the actual zero hit uh, Twitter page from Good Morning America. I want the actual post. Oh, something went wrong. Yeah, right. All right, let's see. I, I just want to see the numbers real quick on it. And ooh. Oh, that's right. St. Patrick's Day. Notice how much I pay attention to that. These holidays, man, they just pop up all over the place. Well, can I find the article? Or the post, rather? Nope. <laughs> Damn, do they post this much? Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So you got one with 
79 retweets, uh, 398 likes, uh, 37 comments. And the other one is of... <laughs> Once again, never forget, this man got 80 million votes. Make him essentially the most popular president ever. And even if, say, the majority of those votes are because people hate uh, Donald Trump, should they not be out in support? To be like, well, at least we don't have Trump? Doesn't look like it, huh? I don't see that many likes. I just wanted to point that out because I think that's kind of interesting that they put this stuff up, but it's like nobody's really paying this shit any attention. Okay, so... Down here it says the 15 page office of the director of national intelligence uh, assessment is being widely reported as concluding that central to the Russia interference was an effort to promote quote unquote Donald Trump and right wing conspiracy theories in an attempt to discredit Mr. Biden. Foreign election interference. Foreign election interference. It says, so that's what it's all talked about, apparently, resurrecting the Russiagate, blah, blah, blah. It says, meanwhile, the Kremlin indicated Wednesday it is taking necessary measures to prepare for any looming new U.S. sanctions, expect in the wake of the intelligence report. You know what that means? Using some other, foreign, uh, uh, some other form of currency, possibly Bitcoin, possibly XRP, possibly some type of blockchain uh, digital currency in order to circumvent without having to worry about uh, doing foreign trade under the U.S. dollar. That's just my opinion that I'm throwing out there because that's what makes a logical sense to me. If, that's what I would do in their, in their situation. If I see things like Bitcoin and other things out there, Ethereum, all the different uh, coins that run on the Ethereum ledger. Uh, you, we we're talking about XRP, XRP ledger, all the different assets that can run on the XRP ledger that can run. Uh, you talk about Spark tokens, or which are Flare. All these different assets, these uh, digital assets, these cryptocurrencies that you can use to circumvent and, and uh, sanction as far as the U.S. dollar being used as a weapon. That, would, to me, would be the most thing that it'll take as necessary measures. That, once again, this is about economy. This is about resources. This is about trade. The whole, nobody wants to really go to war because... Although for the military industrial complex, war is business, but not just selling arms, it's destroying something and pushing the value of the currency down and bringing it back up. Something that I learned recently over the past few months, last year and stuff, uh, from the, I believe it's Tory Says Show, some other people I found on YouTube talking about economy and things of that nature. So the biggest thing to me is that it's saying that Russia interfered with the election. Once again, the 15-page Office of the Director of National Intelligence Assessment is being widely reported as concluding that central to the Russia interference was, a, was an effort to promote Donald Trump and right-wing conspiracy theories in an attempt to discredit Mr. Biden. Plain and simple right there. Plain and simple. Russia interference. Talks about in the election. You heard the audio and what it said. I know I kind of chopped it up a little bit because I had to. But it talks about it. Crazy thing is, though, you have this shit. From the justice.gov website. Once again, government can't say anything. I'm using their own websites. I'm using their own information. I'm using their own data, their own reports, their own surveys. I'm just reading the shit because they don't expect no one to read it. One, because it's goddamn boring. It's boring. But if you know, you know. So I get excited listening to this and listening to this stuff and reading this stuff because it, it makes me laugh because they just lie so much right in your face. So here it goes. Uh, for immediate release, Office of Public Affairs, Tuesday, March 16, 2021, joint statement from the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security assessing the impact of foreign interference in the 2020 U.S. elections. No evidence found that a foreign government manipulated any election results. No evidence found that a foreign government manipulated any election results. 
You know what? You can be super critical and say, well, this is saying uh, election results. Meanwhile, this is talking about uh, interference prior to the election. I'm sorry. What's the difference? If you interfere prior to the election, guess what? You're trying to impact the election results. Are you not? The end goal is still the same, affecting the election results. So if, it, so if Russia linked cyber attacks were found to be used in an online interference related to the 2020 election because they wanted to discredit at the time Mr. Joe Biden to affect the results of the election, how is this not the same as manipulating election results? You're trying to manipulate election results. You're still interfering. How is that not the same? That is a complete, complete, complete contradiction of the fact. <laughs> That's a straight up contradiction. How can you dispute that? How can you dispute that? You can't sit here and say Russia hacked uh, Russia cyber attacks interfere with the election by trying to discredit Joe Biden. And, and then you say there's no foreign government manipulate any election results. Is Russia not a foreign government? By them so-called hacking into the network in the United States and, and, and trying to discredit Joe Biden, does that not interfere with the election results? Does that not have an impact on election results? Does that not try to manipulate election results? Like I said, you can, you can be sit here and be super critical and super, or pre, we want to say precise, be like, well, that didn't try to manipulate the, the results itself. It just tried to discredit him. It, then I guess with apples and oranges, still a goddamn fruit, though. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? It's still, is it still not foreign interference? Is it still not foreign interference? Because then the, you have to argue the case of the fact that if they, if Russia government was doing this and hacking into uh, networks in the United States of America, if they were doing that in, in an attempt to discredit Joe Biden, if they were doing that in an attempt to discredit Joe Biden with the end result being uh, having an effect on the election, results in which who people would vote for what 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 are you talking about how's that not how, how's not the end goal the same thing as opposed to what voting fraud machines because is this particular i assume this is particularly talking about uh dominion voting machines and stuff like that right i <laughs> like what are you talking about here man it's still a contradiction let's see it says the department of justice and the Department of Homeland Security, including the FBI and Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, released today key findings and recommendations from a joint report to the president issued last month on the impact of foreign governments and their agents on the security and integrity of the, U of the see the security and integrity of the 2020 U.S. federal elections. Security and integrity. The departments investigated multiple public claims that one or more foreign governments own, direct, or control election infrastructure used in the 2020 federal elections, implemented a scheme to manipulate election infrastructure, or, or tally, change, or otherwise manipulate vote counts. And see, they're trying to be like, oh, well, you know, this, this, this was, we're talking about November 3rd on the day of affecting elections and voting machines, stuff like that. But, you know, the stuff Russia did before, you know, they were trying to interfere with the election. It's it's almost like admitting to something without actually admitting to it. It's like saying, oh, yeah, there was some foreign interference, but it was prior to the election. And those didn't affect the election results because we took care of that. And that's why we took care of that so much where the point where it came to the actual day of the elections, we were set. <laughs> It's half truth, man. It's half truth. That's all it is. It's, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's all. It's disinformation. The biggest disinformation campaigns come from the United States government in association with corporations and other foreign entities. Okay, so it says these conclusions are part of a classified report. Right? Okay, yeah. So these conclusions are, are part of a classified report to the president prepared by the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security pursuant to Section 1B 
of Executive Order 13848, imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign influence in the United States election, the executive order issued on September 12, 2018. Uh, huh, I wonder who did that. Although 1B report notes that Russia, Chinese, a uh, Russian, Chinese, and Iranian government affiliated actors materially impacted the security of certain networks during the 2020 federal elections, like I just said. So once again, disinformation, half true. See how they're admitting to it? They're admitting that, yeah, there was something. The department found no evidence that any foreign government affiliated actor manipulated election results or otherwise compromised the integrity of the 2020 federal elections. So even though they, they impact the security of the networks during the 2020 federal elections, they found that no evidence that any foreign government actor manipulated it. They're trying to use distinct words to, to make it seem like a separated, isolated issue. Like, yeah, even though they got into the networks, they didn't actually manipulate anything. But how, based on who? Based on the report that you're telling me? Because I'm supposed to trust you? That, that completely, all this contradiction on narrative, you're admitting to it and then not admitting to it at the same time. You're saying, oh, yeah, they, yeah we saw they got into the network stuff before our election. And, and and even during the federal elections, but there we found no evidence that they actually manipulated or compromised the integrity of the election results. <laughs> they think we're stupid. That's why I try to refrain from calling people sheep and, and calling people stupid because the the real people out there, the people in government, the, the bankers, these corporations, these CEOs, execs, all that stuff, these these so called shadowly elite and all those other things, they really think the rest of us are stupid. They really think that we're so stupid that we can't tell the difference from someone having an influence on something. And they're sitting here trying to split hairs and make a, a so-called fine line and be like, oh, well, you know, it was, it, it was this, but it really wasn't so much of that. And, and it, it was really kind of this, but even this didn't have that much of an impact. The fuck does that mean, man? The fuck does that mean? If, they, if someone, some foreign entity got into our networks here in the United States of America to, uh, to have any, to have any impact, to have anything. The fact that they got into it during the federal elections, that's election interference. That's election interference because one, if they're good enough, you won't fucking know what the fuck they did anyways. Obviously, if they're good enough, you wouldn't find out. So worst case scenario, you have to take it at base value and say, hey, they got in. We, are, we don't know for sure. We didn't find anything. But you know what? Just to be safe, toss out the whole election results and let's do this shit again on paper ballots. Oh, my God. What's so hard about that? Because if they actually cared about the government, if people actually cared about the country, if people actually cared about so-called democracy, if people actually cared about this stuff, they'll say, you know what? Just to be safe, let's do this shit again because I'd rather get it right. I don't care if we have to do it several times over. I'd rather we get it right. Isn't that what you practice for? Isn't that why you practice and you get better at something? So you get it right. When you make a mistake, you know, like, you know what? Even though this mistake might seem small, even though it seemed like it didn't have a real impact, we're going to go over this again just to make sure we got it right. In the Air Force, every time we had uh, exercises, any training, stuff like that, you're like, hey, yeah, we got by. Well, actually, you know, I shouldn't say every time because there's, there's a lot of fake training that goes on in the military. Let's be honest. Some people don't know. There's a lot of fake training that goes in the military. When I say fake training, I mean slideshow, slideshow, click, 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 four hours later. Okay, you guys are good. You're trained. You go ahead and go. Oh, appreciate it, man. You know, I fell asleep majority of the time, but I was asleep like three of those four hours. But yeah, I'm good. Let's go. Fuck it. I gotta go home. I got a half day. <laughs> that's that's your military trainer. <laughs> At least in the Air Force. Uh Army, not so much. Although they we did have some of those trainings too. So <laughs> and when I trained with the Army, uh, yeah. But anyways, that, that's essentially what you're saying. Right? It's just uh, you know, well, even though they were in the network and stuff, it seems that I have no real impact. They really didn't manipulate the results and stuff, and they didn't compromise the integrity of the election, so we're good. But once again, that's also discrediting your enemy, your quote-unquote enemy. 
to say that, oh, yeah, we're so great. We stopped all this. But the thing is, if you're so great, they still got into the network. Why would you not take the utmost precautions and just say, you know what? Maybe we should, at, at, at worst case scenario, if not run it back, not, if not do it again, let's take a really hard, hard look. And let's not announce a president or anything until we sit and go through every single ballot in the in the at least in the areas that we know for sure uh foreign entities got into that 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 cyber uh that network rather that network infrastructure uh servers in this part of the world or this part of the country in this county and stuff like that if any uh appearance of foreign interference or foreign entry into those servers into that network in this county in this city in this part or this state or whatever let's Let's take the time to really thoroughly go over it and let's not call any president winning. And that was, to me, the biggest issue during those past 2020 elections is that if anything seems iffy, let's wait till we say a president is. Because if people vote for Joe Biden, I want to know for a fact that they did. I want to know for a fact that they did. If they did, they did. If people want socialism, I want to know for a fact. This is okay. This is what people actually want. The thing is, though, I, don't, I know people don't actually want that because you can't be in a land of the free if you have socialism. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. The freedom to choose your own economic path, your own jobs, and stuff like that, that doesn't work in socialism, communism countries and stuff. And I don't give a I really don't care how they try to label it as, well, this is Stalinism, this is Marxism, this is Leninism, whatever. It's not where I'm in control of my life. And that is the biggest problem. Let's see, it says the, the 1B report relied on classified assessment prepared by the Office of Director of National Intelligence pursuing a blah, 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 blah. Uh, Whereas the one report, one A report discusses efforts to influence public perceptions and opinion, the scope of the one B report only includes efforts to compromise security of election infrastructure, or infrastructure pertaining to election organizations, candidates, or campaigns used in the 2020 federal election. The one B report does not discuss efforts to sway voters or influence opinion. So, what I just read in a zero head art, a zero hedge article in. Uh, coming out on ABC News saying that, oh, yeah, well, there was Russian interference. But that was, they were just trying to influence people's opinion of Joe Biden and discredit him. But we don't count that as manipulating any election results. <laughs> they think we're stupid, bro. They really think we're this dumb, man. Oh, my God. They really think we're this fucking dumb, man. I can't even, once again, I can't even explain it. Like, you guys understand, when I do the podcast, I talk to my kids about the same stuff. And I'm not shocked. And you can say, hey, my kids, maybe your kids seem really wise. They seem intelligent. Okay, blah, blah. No. Yeah, they are. But at the same time, like, you can't explain this shit to a kid and make it make sense because a kid will look at it with no bias. As long as that kid has been raised and not have no particular biases. That kid will look at it objectively as what it is. Like, what are you talking about? You just said they didn't interfere, and now you're saying this doesn't, that interference doesn't count because it didn't manipulate any election results. But if it influenced any voters' opinion, then that will, uh, uh, you're <laughs> uh, manipulating the people, which will thus manipulate the election results. See, that's what I said. When things are, controlled by uh computers and technology and stuff like that when we when we rely on these systems you can have central you can have decentralization but it doesn't matter because if you can influence the human aspect of it which you can argue like we probably should have human aspects involved in certain things but then I, to me i don't want skynet taking over that's just me i'm not good with ai and skynet taking over and quantum computers taking over that's not me i'm not good with that i, I i'm okay with the human element and i'm okay with the 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 odds of somebody being influenced or somebody being corrupted i'm okay with that i'll go along with that human nature aspect 
because you know we can get evidence and, and those people can be locked away or punished or at least outcast or pushed away from society something as opposed to this ai supercomputer quantum computer doing all this stuff and then what then what skynet happens <laughs> Okay, so it says, uh, what was the last paragraph? During the 2020 election cycle, federal, state, local, tribal, territorial, non-governmental, and private sector partners nationwide worked together in unprecedented ways to combat foreign interference and support election officials, political organizations, campaigns, and candidates in safeguarding their infrastructure. Huh, that's interesting, right? Private sector, so corporations non-government entities so that includes your unions you didn't notice how they just won't say it non-governmental that's unions organizations non-profit organizations private sector partners nation uh yeah private sector partners uh corporations corporations and all of them helped out the departments remain committed to continuously strengthening the nation's cybersecurity critical infrastructure, supply chain, blah, blah, blah. This is the biggest slap in the face that you can think of when it comes to talk about the 2020 federal elections. They say that, oh yeah, well, they might they got into the networks to uh, uh, influence voters' opinions, but they didn't do anything that manipulated the election results, even though they still got into the networks during the elections. But, and that's to say that, oh, that they caught every little aspect that foreign entities did. But once again, no, don't discredit your enemy. Don't, don't take your enemy for granted or quote unquote, your enemy. Don't take them for granted. If they can get in, you have to go, uh, you have to go on the, uh, on the basis of, or at least the idea that, Hey, they, they could have done something that we can't catch and are and are unable to catch. You give respect to your opponent. No different than going to a, a, a boxing match uh, or any sporting event, whatever the case may be, a uh, competition rather. You respect your opponent. Doesn't matter how good you are, doesn't how 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 much it appears that you could tell that you are the better uh, team or you're the better player, or you're the better fighter, whatever. You respect your opponent. You don't, you don't sit there and doubt their skills. You respect them and you treat them as a worthy adversary. This is talking about that Russia, Chinese, and Iranian government affiliated actors materially impacted the security of certain networks during the 2020 elections. The departments found no evidence that any government actor manipulated election results or otherwise compromised the integrity of the 2020 federal elections. I keep reading this shit over and over because you have to. Because they're literally just laughing in our faces. And it's like, wait a minute, you're telling me that they they impacted the security of the of networks during the election, but no evidence was found that it, they manipulated any election results. What the fuck does that mean? That doesn't mean that everything's a okay. That means that you probably didn't do your job good enough. Are you are just telling me that no evidence was found, and you're not really letting me know? Because remember, this is official public release. If they actually found anything, wouldn't that not be considered top secret classification? Wouldn't that be considered a, a military operation? A DOD operation? A Department of Homeland Security operation? A CISA operation? Of the highest classification of top secret? Would they even come out and tell us the truth? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, they would, you know, like four or five years from now. During the next presidential cycle, that's when they'll tell us the truth. Because that's what they always do. They don't, they don't even, they're not even waiting for like a generation or like 10 years, two decades. Nah, they, they, they take it like a couple years. Actually, in fact, they don't even wait that long. You know, because I know some people have short-term memory. Some people have long-term memory issues. I get it. I have the same issues at times. But don't worry, we're going to go over this again. Because this is fitting for the, com- the topic of conversation. I already did a podcast episode on it. I believe it was somewhere episode 80 something. I know I did it back in January, but we're going to go over this again because from the time magazine article, and I remember having talked with one of my closest friends 
I was like, I voted for Trump. And he was like, oh, whatever, blah, blah. And he didn't say who he voted for, which is, he don't have to. It's not my business anyway. I don't know who he voted for. It's not my business. I don't really care either. But at the same time, I was like, you know, it doesn't matter who you vote for because elections are, are they, they all set up anyway. We don't actually get to vote, so it's whatever. He was like, oh, yeah, except for last year. That was a secure election. I was like, oh, no, it wasn't, but whatever. Then we left it at that. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, I know what's something that you don't know. The only reason I know is because I didn't sit here and take what people were saying as fact and try to figure shit out myself. That's it. That's it. And I've been there, too, in, in other people's shoes where I was like, okay, you listen to it, and you're just like, all right, cool. But even in the back of my mind, I didn't really trust it, but I didn't go out and do no further research, no further investigation because, well, I let life get, not let life, but, you know, I went about something else. I was worried about other things. I was probably worried about sports and video games or something like that. You know, the distractions that they give us. So we don't pay attention to this shit because Time Magazine wrote a goddamn article saying the secret, the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. The Department of Justice just told us that all these entities came together and, and worked together in unprecedented ways to combat foreign interference efforts and support election officials and all this other stuff and safeguarding the infrastructures. And this is what they did on a Time Magazine article. This is what they did. If you scroll down, once again, read the whole article if you get a chance because this literally is a blueprint of how to steal an election. It's literally a blueprint of how to steal the election. But my fault, they saved the election. Fucking, these people, they were stupid, bro. They think they were stupid. They think they, they were stupid to a level that you never even thought to call someone stupid. They think they were stupid in the most disrespectful manner that you can imagine to think of another human being. This is how fucking dumb they think we are. Look at this. It says, in a way, Trump was right. <laughs> it's a second odd thing happened amid Trump's attempts to reverse the result, blah, blah. So this paragraph right here, it says, there was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes. You know that word that they like to call someone like me, a conspiracy theorist? When I tell you guys that they are literally projecting the United States government these corporations, these uh, or uh, these uh, labor union stuff like that, these other nonprofit organizations, when they sit here and say someone like me is a, is a conspiracy theorist, they are literally projecting because they literally could, they literally theorized and conspired. They conspired because that's what you do when you think of something with a group of people to commit a crime. The definition of conspiracy. These people literally are conspiracy theorists. But no one says anything to the government, even though that's exactly what they do all the goddamn time. It says there was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes, one that both curtailed the protests and coordinated the resistance from CEOs. Both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. You know, Facebook, Google, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Amazon. <laughs> And your left-wing activists, Black Lives Matter, uh, Antifa, all these other groups that I can't even think of the names of. The pact was formalized in a terse, little-noticed joint statement on the United States Chamber of Commerce and AFL-CIO, which is one of the labor unions. I forget the acronym of it. Uh, published on Election Day. Published on Election Day. Both sides would come to see both sides would come to see it as sort of implicit bargain as a sort of implicit bargain inspired by the summer's massive sometimes destructive racial justice protests oh my god they didn't even admit to that that's crazy right in which the forces of labor came together with the forces of capital to keep the peace and oppose trump's assault on democracy how the fuck is that not election interference you're telling me that they did this on their own without no foreign entities helping? We talked about before how the Italian government admitted to it. You, you don't hear about that. 
I forget which episode of the podcast I covered, but the Italian government admitted to it. What what is that? What is that, bro? <laughs> Look into the recent uh resignations of people in the Italian government. You can see that I believe their communications in a, 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 one of the satellites, I think. Man, I should have brought that up in this one. They kill me, man. They kill me. They kill me. They're literally, 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 not only just admitting to it, but throwing it in our face and laughing. They're bragging about it. They're bragging about it. And this is the worst part. Where's the paragraph at? No. Oh, yep. Yeah, right here, before they go into explaining you the architect uh, who did it, the alliance that was uh, uh, that was created among the different uh, entities, and then securing the vote. This is the blueprint. The disinformation defense. Disinformation defense? They are the disinformation. <laughs> this is the literal blueprint of what they did, of what they did to take over the election. To so-called secure the election, they had to fortify it. Look, 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 look at what they did. They mobilized. They got people radicalized over George Floyd deaths, all these different things. Your Black Lives Matter protests, your Women's March, all these different things, man. This is what they did. And this is a blueprint. This is a blueprint. Word for word of what they did. Uh, they march it out the five steps to victory. <laughs> it's a fucking plan, man. <laughs> you can't, you can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up, man. They're just laughing at us, bro. So level of disrespect to our intelligence, to our wisdom, to our able to critical think. They're just. Pitting on us and just like, look, 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 you guys are this fucking dumb. And you know what? People are waking up. God, I hate saying that. People are realizing what's going on. I just want to read this and then we'll move on to the next topic. It says, that's why the participants want the secret history of the 2020 election. Hold. Even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream. A well-funded cabal of powerful people ranging across industries and ideologies working together behind the scenes to influence perceptions influence perceptions the same thing they they are telling us russia did influence perceptions change rules and laws you know the stuff that happened in philadelphia the stuff that happened in other States where all of a sudden laws were changed to have all this mail-in balloting and all this different stuff with no no voter ID, no voter signature verification, steer media coverage and control the flow of information. Control the flow of information. It gets no more election interference than that. It gets no more shadier than that. They were not rigging the election. They were fortifying it. Once again, they think they know what's best for you, me, and everyone you know, at least in the United States of America, and thus people around the world. They think they know what's best. Hey, don't worry. We'll do all this stuff. And yeah, it might seem like we're rigging it, but we're not. We're making sure the election is kept safe. Guess who makes sure the election is kept safe? FISA, Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, FBI the Defense Intelligence Agency, all these different agencies under the DOD, under the executive branch, under the United States president, the United States of America president, which was Trump at the time, that's his job. It's not all these fucking people's job. It's not a well-funded cabal of powerful people and organizations. It's, that's not their job. They are private citizens. They are civilians. They have nothing to do we're keeping the election safe because that is the Department of Defense job. If you guys want to play this game, this is how the game is being played. They are not, you know, them doing that, that's vigilante. That's vigilantism, right? They're going out, going out of their way to take the law into their own hands. It literally says change rules and laws. I don't understand. How, how, that's election interference. I don't understand that can go over anybody's head. 
they're literally saying we did this to fortify it. And you want to believe that they did this because they care? Yeah, yeah, yeah. L let me uh, let me hold on to your money real quick. Don't worry. Just give me your paycheck every month. And I'll make sure that I take your money and I'll pay your bills for you. And I'll make sure that you know, I put something away for savings and I put something for investment. Don't worry. I, I know it's best. I, I can handle these situations and stuff. So I just give me your paycheck every month and I'll take care of it for you. You will never do no shit like that, right? You'll be like, no, nah, that's my fucking money. I don't trust you with my money. Yet people love democracy and they want to trust the elections. That's what they did. That's what they did. They gave it over to other people. Private, uh, private citizens, private entities, a well-funded cabal, powerful people that you never know, never heard of, nothing, that have no oath, takes no oath, don't follow no constitutional laws, no nothing. In fact, they tell you, they change the rules and laws. How is that now election interference? I dare anyone, I fucking dare anyone who has, who has, uh, who has zero doubts that the election was the most secure in a, uh, in the United States history to read this article and tell me that you believe everything that these people are saying that they did it for your best interest and then come to realization that oh this is not United States military this is not United States government per se this is not this is not this this was not done under the order of the United States president this is not done under orders of Congress where the House of Representatives or the Senators Supreme Court Justice well, actually, no, they were all they were in and on it too, so fuck it. But they didn't act in official capacity. Let's put it that way. And they believe the public needs to understand the system's fragility in order to ensure that democracy in America endures. Once again, problem, reaction, solution. They're like, look, we did this. But we did it to make sure that we fixed the infrastructure so nothing bad would happen. This well-funded cabal of powerful people. They think we're stupid, man. They think we're stupid. They think we're this fucking stupid. So much of the fact, they got an article here from Fox 13 News. Gotta love these people. It says, I'm not throwing away my shot. Doctors use Hamilton inspiration to encourage COVID-19 vaccination. Once again, once again, people's money. I, 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 you know what? I don't want to say it's government money. Uh, let's read the article first. Let's see what it says in here. <laughs> the video has garnered over 25,000 views on YouTube as of March 16th. Yeah, probably everybody laughing at the shit too. Experts, uh, long advocates, so everyone to be vaccinated, blah, blah. No, I want to know. So who made, who, who did this? Oh, uh, his Associated Press article. That's good to know. Who, but who create, who did this? Okay, okay. So it says a group called the, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Oh my God, look at this shit. The group called the Vaccine 8. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I uh, I, 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 you know, there's been times in my life, in my adult life, where I'm like, you know, I'm done with humanity. I'm done with people. People just suck. And then over the past year or so, I've been trying to have a resurgence and and be like, you know what? I have, have I gotta have hope for humanity. You gotta have hope. I know hope is irrational, but you gotta have hope. But I don't know, man. Like I don't know. I don't know if human beings can be saved, bro. I don't know human beings want to be safe. I don't, I don't think human beings want to be autonomous. I don't think human beings want to be independent. I think they just want to be controlled. I get it. It's in our DNA. The, the modern human beings, the modern homo sapiens sapiens, all we know is enslavement. Whether it's through pure physical means, emotional, or psychological. It's psychological throughout, throughout our modern history. It's all psychological, but you think at some point everybody want to break free. A group called the Vaxin 8. V A X apostrophe N 8. N the number 8. Why? Why do this shit, bro? I understand the propaganda behind it and stuff, but like, are you serious? It says consists of seven very talented 
doctors. At least, come on, bro. If you're going to say vaccinate, just tell me the eighth person. Let's see. Very, <laughs> very talented doctors. What the fuck is a talented doctor? What? The, what? A doctor is not talented. They, they work hard. They study. They practice. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> rework, quote unquote, my shot from Lin, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda's wildly popular Hamilton Broadway show to address misinformation around the COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccine. This is something that I did a video on with Run DMC, and I know I mentioned it too, as, they, as he sat here and did a video, or rather DMC from Run DMC, Darren McDaniels, as he did his little ad campaign for the, the so-called black community and made a rap video, you know, because black people love rap, you know, us niggas, we love rap, bro, you know, can't help it. So if you put anything in a rap song, a rap video, yeah, we're going to eat that shit up, you know, because all those black people walk, talk, act shit the same. So we're one mind. We're not any individual at all. All black people are the same. I don't know if you notice this, but uh, all black people are the same. Coming from a black person, right? Coming from a so-called black person, all so-called black people are the same. But if you, the white person or a non-black person, say that, guess what? You're racist. So don't say that racist shit to me because, you know, us all black people, all us niggas, we the same, bro. We the same. <laughs> so I guess this video is towards all the non-people that don't like rap music, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what is this for? <laughs> it doesn't matter. They just... They're just trying to target anybody because they don't think of you as an individual. They only think of you as a collective, as a label, or a category in which they already try to place you in. And when I say they, guess what I'm talking about? Other people. Other people. Corporations. Governments. CEO. Regular everyday people who's been sitting there drinking a the Kool-Aid. Yeah, hey. You drink too much Kool-Aid, you know. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're in a cult. Next thing you know, you're taking a suicide pact. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It says the music video published on, uh, to YouTube on March 10th by the... Wait a minute. So it was published on March 10th. So by March 16th, only had 25,000. That's not a lot, bro. That's not a lot. But I, I guess they're not that big, though. Whatever. Who I'm talking about. I, I, like, I get views, whatever. I, I might get... <laughs> I, I might get, like, 20 views... Or maybe 100 views. Actually, depending on the video, I might get 100 views. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. My channel is still growing, and I ain't shit. And I'm not for everybody. So I expect a small audience. It says a music video published on YouTube on March 10th by the Vaccinate. The Vaccine... Vaccine 8. <laughs> cheekly titled, I'm not throwing away my shot. <laughs> I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot either because I ain't got, I'm not going to be nowhere near it to throw that bitch away. And it says pointed to, uh, as long as they don't try to mandate it for uh, veterans, it says it pointed to the scientific and political issues currently affecting the decision to receive the vaccine against the virus. You see, this is, once again, how stupid they think we all are. Just because people have genuine questions and concern about something that got developed really fast. I don't care what Trump says, bro. I'm not trusting something that you guys develop really fast because no one's looking at the long-term effects. And this is where I, I think he kind of plays a kind of dark night role. And if not, then whatever the case may be, or he's lying in his pocket, it's still fucked up. It doesn't matter. No one's above criticism. This is still, you know, it's, this is wrong, man. Don't get it. This is not a scientific or political issue. This is me, the, the individual, saying, hey, I don't know what you did to make this so fast Okay, that's cool, but I'm going to have reservations on this at least for a few years to see what happens. In fact, if I've been going this whole year without it, and I've been around all these people and stuff, I've already taken my chances. I might as well keep taking my chances and continue doing what I'm doing because this has worked so far. This has proven to work for me already. So why would I take your vaccine? Outside of financial reasons as far as my job and stuff like that, I get that. I understand that. And I will never knock anybody for that. You do what you have to do to survive, and we all make choices. But that's not my choice to make because 
you have to live with the choice that you make. And that's for each individual to make on their own. But don't criticize anyone because they have a question about what's in it and what are the potential long term side effects. Because guess what? No one has measured the long term side effects yet because it hasn't even been a goddamn year. Then what? Since October, six, seven months since they, if my math, I'm probably counting wrong, but you know, <laughs> then what? Yeah, about six, six months or so since a lot of the stuff came out and the shots didn't come out since December. So what? About four months going on five months. I'm good, man. I'm good. I, that's that, We're still talking about short term effects. We're not talking about no long term effects. I don't know if I'm going to grow an extra elbow, uh, uh, extra nipple. I don't know if something all of a sudden going to come out of my asshole when it's not supposed to. I don't know what's going to happen, bro. You're talking about a, a thing that's a R, R, mRNA that's messing with your DNA. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to grow an extra toe. Right. Maybe another finger. I don't know. I don't know if my dick and balls are going to just shrink up. I don't know what's going to happen, bro. There's things you got to think about. It sounds crazy, but you know what's crazy? Putting something in your arm that you really don't know. Let me stop. Let me stop. No. What's crazy is that they want to call someone uh, uh, having a political issue or a scientific, all this other stuff because you're questioning something that you don't know about. And just because you give a video and try to promote this, it doesn't change the fact that you're not telling me exactly what's in this stuff, for one. And two, we don't know the long-term side effects. We do not know the long-term side effects. We do not know the long-term side effects we do not know the long-term side effects that goes without question so this group is from northern california and yeah it's from northern california this oh god this is gonna be cringeworthy this shit already looks cringeworthy we got one dude already far right here doing like a like a superman landing or a superhero landing we got a uh, speaking of superman and stuff I, I'm going to do a Justice League uh, review, a Jack, a Zack Snyder's review. I don't know if I'm going to do a podcast episode on it or if I'm going to make a, a video and do it. I'm still debating because uh, it, it really depends on what time I have this weekend. If I can sit down and knock out a video, I don't really want to have it long. I, I did a, a review, uh, one. I did a couple movie reviews and I spent like an hour in the podcast talking and stuff and I don't know if I want to leave it for a channel. That way I can put up images and stuff or what. And I actually need to look into copyright issues too because I'm tired of these copyright claims. I mean, my videos are monetized anyways, but a lot of my videos get more views after the day or two or a week after it's uploaded. So more views for me. I mean, anything over zero is a more is more views for me. <laughs> Like anything over zero, I was like, oh wow, two video, uh, two views today. That's great. So that's how you have to look at it. But anyway, that's me growing my channel, blah blah blah. So just looking at this though, it just, it just, what the fuck they got on, man? Is that a helmet? It's, it can't be a helmet. It can't be a helmet because it just has to be a face shield. It can't be a helmet. It can't, it can't be a complete security helmet because they have no oxygen tanks on. You know, when you go into a level four biohazard containment unit and you have to have this full biohazard suit on, you know, when there's a actual extreme virus, like Ebola or something like that, you have to, and it's very uh, contagious and the transmissibility rate is high and the infection rate is high. And, and uh, I want to say the symptoms and stuff like that are more dire. The effects are more serious. You know you got to be fully closed up. Because even if you have a cut on your arm, small little cut, obviously a virus can get in that way too. I don't think people ever stop to think about that. Any cut that you have is just exposed out. And you supposedly a virus is around. Well, then by germ theory, the virus can get in, right? Brain theory says, though, that your body acts different to the virus once it's in there because it's based on your immune system. But whatever. We're gonna watch this shit. We're gonna watch this shit. Oh God. Yes. Bon Appetit is Tampa Bay's premier. This is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. They are. They're gonna, they're gonna make me watch a commercial. Oh, oh! Don't show a commercial about how wide open Florida is. Then people might get a little pissed off. Oh, where's their mask at and stuff? 
Here we go. <laughs> my shot of vaccine. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. Let me read this to y'all for the audio version of the podcast. It says, my shot. A COVID vaccine adaptation. Original music and lyrics by Lin Muel Miranda. Adapted lyrics by Andrew Liu. Acknowledgement of fair use by Lin Muel Miranda. So there goes your associ- your corporate association. So you have the entertainment industry helping with this ad. Or my, or my fault, music video. You see how I said ad? Because it's basically that's what it is. This is going to be bad. Oh my God. This is five. Oh my God. This is... I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. <laughs> hey, like stop, 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 stop. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh. I can't. I don't know. I can make through this shit, man. I should have did a whole separate video for this. <laughs> I can't make through this shit. Oh my god! You know, I might have to. I might have to do a whole separate video to this, just to do a breakdown or something. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. For those on the audio version of the podcast, just listen to the audio, man. If you want to check that video? Let me know. You go to my YouTube or RSC channel to watch the video or. Finding yourself online and stuff somewhere. I just, oh my god, this is hard. This is hard already. Away my shot. I have seen a thing or two in med college. I shouldn't brag that modern medicine can really astonish maladies like smallpox are being abolished. But out of nowhere comes a zoonotic virus for which we've no knowledge. <laughs> it's a different kind of beast, a new type of threat. Every doctor dreads down, leaving more than a million deaths. Eleven months along this pandemic disaster. <laughs> These vacuum streets get colder with shoulder. Every burden, every disadvantage we've tried to manage, but without a way forward, we're beaten down and damaged. The plan is to find a cure to Bars. change the game. In case you haven't noticed, let me spell out its name. It's the C-O-R-O-N-A-V. <laughs> IR US, it's COVID 19. Actually, it's actually it's a SARS-CoV-2, but whatever. These are doctors. Why do you gotta be exact? <laughs> this is worse than like uh, Schoolhouse Rock was better than this. Like you know, like I'm just a bill. Like these, this is worse. Uh, I could easily write a better song. I could easily write better lyrics. We're not even trying. Whatever, man. Whatever. With impunity, essentially, it trains your immunity to recognize virus parts with most certainty, activate T and B cells to fight disease and kill the virus before it can grow with ease. Victory, we say in parentheses. Don't be shocked when our history books mention these interventions that fuck back infirmity, bring it back our very lives and normalcy. You said interventions that fought back, whatever. It showed a mask and. Hand sanitizer. Fucking stupid, man. I'm throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. Hey, on. As he's saying, I'm not throwing away my shot and stuff. When we just talked about biohazard suits, guess what? They're showing a picture of a person in a full hazmat suit, gloves, boots, tucked in everything, tucked in tight and stuff like that. I don't see no oxygen tank though, but if anything, you have at least some type of filterization on your mask or on your uh whatever, man. Whatever. I can't wait to show my kids this shit. A dream of life without a fully D. Every patient will be cared for in their time of need. Waiting rooms, hallways, and no place to be comfortable. Got a triage while protecting up vulnerable with my shot. Yo, I treat the infectious. We vaccinated safely now with decades of practice. Now MMR and polio are things of the past. We'll have a blast beating this COVID at last. It's oh my God. Shots. You know, people, we'll people be- take the polio and MMR vaccines because other people have taken before. If, if, <laughs> if... If polio and MMR came out at the same time right now, i will be like, I hold my reservations for a while. Actually, didn't those weren't those in trials for years before they came out? But you know, I guess the technology was different then. I wonder how much I hope these people got paid. 
I hope all these doctors got paid. I hope they or they got some type of tax write off. I hope they got some type of uh monetization, something, some type of mon uh uh monetized compensation, anything. Give them a day off, a week off, give them something. Because if they're shelling themselves out like this because they really believe, then well, we need to pay attention to their uh medical license. Yeah. But you know, they pull doctors from all wait a minute, they pull doctors from all types of different uh specifications. This person right here is uh, Dr. Tuong V Ha Du. Uh I believe I said Dr. Du Tuong V Ha. Uh from he's a family medicine doctor. So that's your general medicine practice doctor. The person that you regularly see. Uh Oh my god! I, like you should only be speaking to virologists. Oh my god, man! Oh god, just push through. Just push through. Free until our kids are back at school and blowing out their energy. My kids are back at school. Do or die. Wait till I'm making the connections. Bringing your kids protections with another shot. Geniuses, lower your voices. You keep pushing patients like they haven't got choices. I'm with you. But the social media is fraught with anti-vaxxers stirring the pot. The trust is gonna get. Oh, oh, oh let's talk about me. Oh, it's talking about me. Oh, any vaccines, vaccines based on 5G chemotherapy or chemo treatment, something like that. Uh, got all these different things. Got a picture of, uh, of someone in a, not V for Vendetta, uh, Guy Fox mask, you know, showing up uh, anonymous and stuff like that. Uh, Earth spins, clones, uh, clothes spin. So it's people like me, you know, you're conspiracy theorists. Because we have questions. Shots. Yo, check what we got. About a hundred kneeling interventions ready to rock. You can hear us talk, complete with swagger or not, but believe the sight of doctors lining up for their shots. What are the odds? Big farmers here and serving it hot. Through their competition, start to build a cure in a box. Got a distributor. Oh, she's reading the card. Give me a syringe and show me where the, the vaccination, vaccination is. Not my Give me a syringe and show me where the vaccination is. Give me a syringe and show me where the vaccination is. No, guy. No, no, no. I'm good. See, I don't need someone to point out a villain for me. I don't need someone to tell me who I'm supposed to listen to, who I'm not supposed to listen to. I listen to my goddamn self because that's really all you can ever do. And anytime you listen to someone else, you're just listening to yourself still. And when you listen to someone else, all you're doing is just agreeing with that person because you already thought of it. You just you haven't even realized it yet. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck, bro? Shot, I'm not throwing away my shot. They all just like the country and downtown. Wait, 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 let me go back. Let me they all just like the country and downtown. So it's showing right now Pfizer and Moderna as articles from New England Journal of Medicine and it's saying refutable peer reviewed journal randomized control trial excuse me randomized control trial it's showing the number of participants for Pfizer and Moderna and then it's showing the number of vaccine groups yeah so Pfizer have a little over a four thousand or four three thousand five hundred forty eight. I guess it's gave exact number. And then Moderna had thirty thousand four hundred twenty. Four twenty. Cool. Participants. Where the fuck they give these people from, man? They had to pay these people. It says uh one of the things says fourteen including assessment fourteen days after the first day analysis that included participants who had Evidence of SARS-CoV-2 infections and blah, blah, analyze something. It's six, five years old. I can't read the rest of that. My thing is, it doesn't fucking matter. We're still not talking about long-term effects. Long-term effects means years, not a few months. Not a few months. Long-term effects means years. Oh, my fucking God. So it has a 21,720 vaccine group, 14,134 vaccine group for Moderna, 
versus the uh, 14,000 for Moderna versus the uh, 27,000 of what? Uh, something place. I just skipped past over it. And then they break down, of course, everything's about race. So they're telling you 82.9% white people or whoever they call white, someone self identifying as white was part of the participants for Pfizer and then 79.2% of so-called white people were part of participants for Moderna. Then you got 10.2% black, 4.6% Asian for Moderna and 9.3% black and 4.3% Asian for Pfizer because, you know, race means something to these people when we're talking about taking a fucking vaccine. I don't know because your DNA is unique to your own so the I, I guess your skin color has something to do with your DNA, even though it doesn't, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, what, whatever. And you're talking about skin exposure, or uh, sunlight exposure rather to the skin, whatever. And then your ethnicity, or 28% Hispanic, 42.2% uh, over the age of 55. And then 20 for Pfizer and then for Moderna, 20.5% Hispanic and 24.8% over the age of 65. Because it's fucking stupid. Hey, I'm just like my country, I'm downtown and angry and I'm not throwing away my shot. I have dealt with death so much it fills up my memory. Ones are gonna take all these loved ones away from family. If I see it coming, am I helpless to let it be? Is it like a beat without a melody? See, I've never seen a virus strike so deadly. Anywhere you work, patients crash quickly. Ask anybody who- he's, As he's rapping, singing, whatever, he has a little, looks like a, a helmet on. I don't see no filterization anywhere. I, I don't even know. I'm, I know air is getting in because, well, clearly he's fucking talking, so he's breathing. But this shit is also getting fogged up, so the ventilation and is not that great either. I, uh, this is what they we think have of to us. Strive, man. Working hard through overtime, have to make each precious life last. That's plenty. Second that, more than this moment, it's a movement. Where are the silent majority to represent? Both suppose we take an honest stand, provide the answers to questions that they demand. And if we rise above complacence. Is that a guarantee of freedom for our patients? Or will the loss of trust begin an endless cycle of lockdowns for the economy and business? I know the stuff can rap better though. Unsettling, but Maybe. we have to stand together and fight yeah, I, I probably information. Could. We need some leaders who will be more than politicians. Are we a nation of states? What's the state of our nation? I'm past patiently waiting. I'm passionately smashing misrepresentation. Every shot's an act of affirmation. I'm standing in and this dude came in hard, bro. He's like, I'm coming in with these bars, bitch. <laughs> he all tatted up and stuff. Yeah, I'm coming with these bars, bitch. Represent. Get your goddamn shot. What's up? <laughs> what? I keep telling y'all, bro. This is how fucking stupid they think we are, that we are, man. This is how fucking stupid they think we are. Oh my God, this shit is horrible. Way of casualties and sorrow. For the first time, I'm thinking past tomorrow. Oh my God, they breaking out dance routine. Hey, if they'll get their ass back to fucking work. <laughs> Go save somebody's life or some shit. I don't know, fucking. <laughs> Get your ass back to work, man. <laughs> when they sh when did they shoot this shit? It had to be at nighttime. Wait a minute. It's a hospital. There's no nighttime, man. It's like... <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be this bad, bro. I oh, my God. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. I tried to prepare myself. I was like... I, see I just seen this shit this morning. I had a whole different episode planned out for the day. Whole different episode. But I had some articles already saved up from um, last night and stuff like that. And then I seen this shit this morning. I was like, oh, my God. Yep, this rounds it up. I got to talk about this shit. And this is what I want to spend most of my time on. I need to hurry up and finish this because, oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't wait for my kids to get home, man. I got to show them this shit. They going to fucking die laughing, man. They going to be like, Dad, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Oh, my fault. And their kid turns and they go back, what the frick? <laughs> what the flip? <laughs> what the fuck?
fuck is this, bro? This is stupid, man. This is stupid. You know what? I, I, I know what I'm gonna do. I got. I'm gonna just clip this part. I'm gonna clip this part and just set and do his own and upload the video separately. That, that's what I have to do. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> I'm not even done. It's like a minute left. Time to take a shot. Time to take a shot. It's time to take a shot. They're doing dance moves. Look at the choreography. Take a shot. 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 Yo, it's time to take a shot. Time to take a shot. And I am not throwing away my. Not throwing away my shot. I won't throw away a shot of patrol, bro. I'm not taking your shot. If I take a shot, it'd be a shot of alcohol or something like that. I'm not taking your fucking vaccine, bro. This is. Please let that be it. Oh my god, that was it. Oh my god, that was it. Then it lists all the doctors who sold their souls to make this fucking video. Some of them were infectious diseases and stuff like that. So that's, at least that's good. Uh, I, I, I ain't got nothing else to say, man. We just, I'm, I'm done with that shit. I'm done. So on to the next topic, what I want to really focus on. I, I know I went on my rant with, uh, man, because that's why I love doing this shit live, man. That's why I don't like editing none of that stuff because you're getting an honest reaction to me. And I'm literally, for the majority of this, uh, these articles, stuff, I'm reading it for the first time on air. I'm reading it on air. You know, I went to school for radio. You know, I'm old school too. I can't believe I said on air. <laughs> but I'm, re I'm literally reading it for the first time. Oh my God, man. Fuck, that really fucked my head, man. That was, that was horrible. That was horrible in every aspect that you can think of. Like that, that looked like a student project. Not even that, because that, that's that's giving it too much. I, I guess student projects have too much. That's too much credit. But they don't deserve that credit. Right, whatever, man. Whatever. Let's drop it. Let's drop it. So here we got a article from Breaking Down One. So this was a big thing that happened yesterday. Uh, March 16th, it says eight dead in a string of spa shootings in Atlanta area, gunmen in custody after manhunt. So I, when I first seen this, I kind of ignored it. And then I seen more of it. And then once what stood out to me when I started seeing people saying Asian, Asian, Asian. And I don't think breaking down one, I don't know if they say it in this one, but I know it was like Reuters and maybe Associated Press and something else was saying Asian. So I was like, okay, here we go. If they're saying Asian, we just talked about this a few episodes ago. Talking about, oh, no one really talks about Asian and racism towards them and the stuff they went through, uh, blah, blah, stuff like that. And look at that. Just on cue, somehow by coincidence, now we have a mass shooting that involves Asian. And it says Atlanta Spa. So if me being racist, me being a stereotyping people, me being prejudiced, and you, you doing the same thing probably, Atlanta Spa, Spa, massage parlors, you're thinking Asian as well. You racist motherfucker. <laughs> you racist son of a bitch. You're thinking the same thing as well. Oh, man. And then this dude, of course he's white. Once again, being racist, stereotyping, prejudice, bringing out my bias. Of course he's white. Because what else would he be but white? He has to be white. Here's looking at young Timothy McVeigh, wherever this dude is and stuff. And look like they put a vest on him or something. I guess they want to make sure nobody kills him. So this is out of Cherokee County, Georgia. A suspected gunman was taken into custody after eight people were killed at massage parlors in the metro Atlantic area Tuesday. At least one other victim was wounded. Huh. Numerology, pay attention to it. Says Atlanta Police Chief Rodney Bryant told CBS 46, that must be a local CBS affiliation news, that four females, all believed to be Asian, see? All believed to be Asian. It doesn't even fucking matter, bro. Now watch, I don't have to read the rest of this article. And this is breaking down one, so I know other articles will be doing the same thing. I don't have to read the rest of this article. Watch it be Asian-inspired. 
racism. Watch it has some ties to do with uh, white supremacy, which is ironically, maybe not ironically, but I'm in tune with the universe and what's going on because this is what I was going to talk about today. White supremacy groups and how much we put too much emphasis on the, of their existence and stuff. Is you can rarely find these motherfuckers. But look at this shit. I say that shit and I, I, I was about to do the episode that was going to be the focus of the, today's episode. And a couple episodes ago, we are talking about Asians and stuff like that, how they face racism and stuff like that. And nobody really talks about their struggle. And yet, so-called Asians are still able to prosper, own businesses, get, go to good colleges and stuff like that. Even though they have the same, not the exact same situation, I believe, as like black people. But I mean, whatever, it's still the same concept of racism and, and stuff like that. And here you go. Here you go. Something to pander to people's emotions. So right off the bat, this screams PSYOP, MK Ultra to me. I don't care if you think it's crazy or not. I didn't create the MK Ultra program. The CIA did. It's not my fucking fault. Psychological operations, U.S. government does that. U.S. military, Department of Defense does that. I didn't do that shit. It's not my fault. This screams it. Sorry if I'm paying attention to the clues. Sorry if I notice pattern recognition, the same thing over and over and over. This dude, why does it do look like that? Because they, it's always the same image. It's always the same person that looks like it. It's like they pick and, you know, they pick and choose this shit. It's not a coincidence. Okay, so it says all believed to be Asian, believed to be, whatever the fuck that means, were fairly shot at two spas on Piedmont, uh, Piedmont Northeast in Atlanta. I believe, I guess that's a street. Maybe the, the district or something like that. Three victims were found at Gold Spa, and one was found at Aromatherapy Spa. Aromatherapy, you know, you know, this is Asian stuff, right? I'm being prejudiced. I'm being racist, right? I'm being, I'm giving out my social bias. That's that's what I'm doing right now. It says early in the day, three people were killed at a spa in Woodstock, Georgia. The suspect in the shootings, 21 year old Robert Long. Where's his middle name? Didn't I want to say his middle name? You know he got one. Uh, was taken in, into custody after a police chase where he stopped only after cops performed a pit maneuver. So he, he didn't stop. He, he, got, he got taken over. He got taken down. Pit maneuver, you know, when they hit the, uh, the tail end of your car. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I'm sitting thinking, I think I had to do that before. Did I do that before? I had a bunch of different driving training. Uh, nighttime vision, the Humvee, Humvee driving training, some other stuff. Did I do a pit maneuver before? I don't think so. I don't think so. That's why it sounds, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I'm thinking about, I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking about. Oh my God, this is wild. So then it shows a picture of the, uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution uh, in the front page of all the different spa places, stuff, whatever. It says the Chris County Sheriff's Office said in a statement around 8 p.m., Chris County Sheriff's Office received information from Sheriff Frank Reynolds that a wanted, that a wanted suspect was traveling south on the Georgia 401 to I-75, a 2007 black Hyundai Tucson. Tucson. You can't make this shit up. This person kills Asian people while driving an Asian-made car. Uh, is Hyundai? I gotta look this up. This is gonna bother me real quick. Is Hyundai? Is that is that foreign? I think that's South Korean, right? I think that's South Korean. What is that? I think that's South Korean. Uh, uh this is so unnecessary. I shouldn't even do this. I shouldn't even do this. But now, because I just got to know now, because you, you got to kind of laugh at the irony. Yeah. Hyundai Motor Company is South Korean. Uh, Wikipedia gets on my nerves, but you know, they make it so easy to find, to read the information. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's what I thought. South Korean, because when I was over there, that's what I saw a lot of. I was like, oh shit, it's from here. I think that in Kia. So, 
the person that shoots Asian people was driving an Asian car. Now, you know the narrative is going to be set up some type of white supremacy, stuff like that. But he's driving an Asian car. A South Korean made Asian car. Uh huh. Uh, it was spotted south around mile marker, blah, blah. Uh, they stopped him, all this other stuff. Now, this picture right here does not look like the same person right here. That's just me. That's just off first glance. Uh, I get the hat. I understand the glasses. I can see uh, kind of a lazy eye to his left eye. It was Joe Biden's was his right eye. I think about it. I said the wrong eye. But uh, you can see the difference in noses. There's a little indention right above his uh, top lip in the middle, directly, uh, almost vertically underneath the uh, main bridge of his nose. You can see an indention. I don't see the same thing. And the lips don't look the same. Is this the same guy? It says Cherokee County Sheriff's Office, PIO confirms Long. Hey, this doesn't even look like Long. This doesn't even look like the same fucking picture, man. This doesn't even look like the same guy. Some of the facial hair kind of looks the same. Pretty much. It's just a beard. Uh, with thinned out on the sides. Maybe it's taken at different times. You know, it doesn't even matter if it's taken at different times because the lip sizes are different. The lip sizes are different. Like maybe I'm tripping, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm off of something. I'm sorry, just it looks different, bro. It says blah blah and all that stuff. Stuff. Uh, is this a video? Is this a video? Huh. Let's see if I click on it. Will it play? No, it's gonna open up Facebook. I don't have Facebook. Go away. Uh, it says breaking. So this is from one of the local CBS uh, news anchors, or reporters rather. It says three killed, two others in, uh, in hospital in Cherokee County massage parlor shooting. Here's a look at the scene. Another shooting in Atlanta massage parlor has also been connected, but police have not confirmed they are connected. Another police shooting has also been reported. Excuse me. I was like, what? But they have not confirmed they've been connected. But I'm guessing they have been connected by now it says investigators are working to determine why victims are targeted so this is from the Atlanta Journal Constitution I scroll back up uh, shoot it and it said the shootings are 30 miles apart so they already sent up the narrative right they already sent up the narrative that Robert Long Robert Aaron Long and I shared something on Twitter as far as uh, Larry Johnson the former football player all pro football player too. I actually liked him, liked him while he was a uh, running back for the Chiefs. But he uh, he talks a lot about Freemasonry, uh, occulted things, secret societies, and numerology and stuff. And he pointed out Robert Aaron Wrong, Aaron uh, A Wrong Long. That's something to think about. So you tell me this one dude killed all eight eight people and injured one more, or and thirty miles apart. In the shootings, and he drove to all these people's places to shoot them, and they're Asian, and he's driving a Asian car, a South Korean car to be exact. I'm calling him now. They're gonna call him a white supremacist. They're gonna tie him to neo Nazi, something like that. I wouldn't be shocked if they try to throw in Proud Boys. I wouldn't be shocked by that at all. Wouldn't be shocked by that. But definitely, this is your another same. Uh, scenario of uh, homegrown terrorism, blah, blah, that they like to create. You know that shit is created, right? You know that shit is created. You know that shit is created. And whether I do the episode tomorrow or not, I'm going to tell you right now, if you go to these people's web pages, these websites for these so-called neo-Nazi Americans and all these uh, white supremacist hate groups and stuff, they don't even advocate for violence on their shit. Some of them advocate for just complete separation and that's it. But yeah, they tell you they hate groups and they, and they hate everybody and they're violent. But you go to their shit, they're not talking about no violence at all. And then you'll say, oh, well, of course they're not going to openly talk about it. But yet, on the news and media outlets, mainstream media to be exact, they'll tell you that these people openly advocate for hate and violence towards people, yet 
when you go to their website, they don't openly advocate for it. Which one is it? Contradicting stories. You never seen these people in your life. Apparently they exist. And every time they exist, it's always in some small town that no one goddamn lives in that no one even bothers to go visit. Obviously, these people won't work in any near metropolitan area or any huge corporation or anything like that. They can't. So the best bet, all they can be is uh, local business-owned farmers and they have to stay in their own little town because obviously, when they want to interact with a majority or a larger portion of society, guess what? They got to be around other races. They got to be around other people's sexual orientation, sexuality, stuff like that. Other sexes. They have no choice. Then what? Oh, they hide it? I don't care if you hide it. As long as you don't bring that shit out with me in public, we're good. I don't care what you do in your own house. You can do whatever you want in your own house. It's not my business. Because I don't want you to know what I do in my own house. Even though you know what I do. A lot of nothing. I'm playing. A lot of video games playing, though. What else? Is, I, I, I'm calling it. I'm calling it now. It's white supremacy. I'm calling it it's white supremacy. Uh, it's going to be some neo-Nazi shit tied into... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they tied Proud Boys into it. Even though Proud Boys has nothing to do with it, it doesn't matter. They throw a name out there. You know, the, I showed you guys the leader of Proud Boys. Cuban American dude. Black Cuban American. You want to go with labels, that's what he is. He could be, he could be a, a psyop too. He could be just a plant in there or whatever. It doesn't matter. There's still other members of Proud Boys that, you know, ain't white. You dilute the the actual uh real issue of the thing i say this all the time when you talk about race and and hate groups because it doesn't matter what the reason why that they say that they hate someone understand that they don't they hate someone and when you hate someone well you lack love hate is the absence of love so these people have something wrong with them internally and they're looking for a a so they're looking to fit in. Just like a lot of people are looking to fit in. They're looking for someone that they can say is their friend, is their family. Because they feel like they've been shunned from society. And they don't have enough self-esteem. And this is not even a knock or criticism towards them. This is just, this is human nature. This is trying to deal with modern society and stuff. Having, how do you have self-esteem? How do you have confidence in yourself? Or try to have confidence in self-esteem in, in, in yourself. High self-esteem. And you don't have it. Then you go looking for it. It's somewhere, and you're just looking for that admiration, that affection, that attention from someone or some people, and then you go seeking it. The same type of mentality that leads uh, your so-called inner black youth right into gang life is the same mentality that leads uh, your young white male or whatever into a hate group. It's literally the same mentality. A lot of the lack of, of uh, father. In the household, a lack of, a lack of especially we talk about from a male perspective, lack of a strong male figure. Some of there's a lack of, of, of maternal, emotional love or something like that, or just affection in general. Necessarily doesn't have to be mother or father. It's some, something is missing in the household. Now I say, I don't care if you have two dads or two mothers. I like the two. Be anything other than two, three is a crowd. I'm just saying, that's just my own personal opinion, but whatever. But if, when you lack something in that household and and if it's not being made up somewhere or something like that, it can affect people. And, and, and that's not even to say you can have a single household, right, and still accomplish the things that need to be accomplished as far as a foundation and raising children. You can do it with one parent. It's not the ideal situation. Let's be like... It's not rocket science. It's not ideal, but you can do it. it. But it helps to have both parents in the kid's life. I am divorced, yet both parents are in the in my kid's life, so that's good at least, right? And you can build upon that. You, there's always workarounds. There's always different ways you can address an issue, and you can handle it. But the same mentality that you see where people go into gangs, it's the same thing when people go into these hate groups. It's the same mentality. They're just looking for something that's missing with inside themselves. And they also have to take their own responsibility, or excuse me, they, they have to take their own accountability and to uh, be accountable to their own actions as well. Be responsible for their, themselves and their behavior that they do. 
this, you can watch a documentary or whatever about people that have been in hate groups and, and left hate groups. I think that's why I got to share. There's this TED talk where this guy was talking about why he joined a hate group and stuff. And really it was because that he was, he was just, you know, one of those young teens where it was just lacking and missing something. Oh, okay. Okay. I got a notification on my phone. I have this uh, breaking news app downloaded on my phone. Looks like it's from Business Insider. It says, police say suspect in Atlanta area killings had a sex addiction and may have been to the massage parlors before. Oh, okay. Well, that's something new. We're going with that route. We're going that route. Now he's just an overly, overly sexualized male. I, I, still, I still think they're going to throw white supremacy in it. I still think that's in play. I still think that's in play. Only because they keep saying Asian. Oh, see, and then it says, it's too, too, it's too soon to say attacks were racially motivated. Nah. Now nah, you're just leaving the door open because by the end of this week, or definitely by sometime next week, it'll be racially motivated. It'll be racially motivated. Huh. So they're going with that, huh? Now he's just over-sexualized man. Uh, he's, he's a womanizer. Uh, he's a misogy He's misogynistic. Man, they okay. I give it to them. They hitting all areas now with this side out. I give it to them. I give it to them. They expand a little bit. Like, all right, now we're gonna go after this part. So you know, you gotta give it to us. It's a well thought out plan. Like, okay, we'll attack this, and then you can't beat a dead horse too much. So eventually, at some point, you gotta move on to something else. But you can still kind of reference the dead horse you've been beating as well. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my God! That's, that's, so we're still on the open and preliminary reports, which to me is the best reports because it's fresh, it's not manipulated, it's not uh, well, not too much manipulated. Nobody's gotten too much to it yet, but it's 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 fresh. Is it's fresh? I'm not gonna say it's raw, but it's fresh. Is because like what motivates him to kill these people? He's a sex addict. Well, why not kill hookers or prostitutes? I should say prostitutes or sex workers. But you can't say hookers because that's bad now, too. I think it's bad to say hookers. I, 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 even though I grew up watching uh, <laughs> Real Taxi Cab Confession and Real Sex and stuff like that. Oh, and my parents only knew what I was watching. <laughs> it was funny that I grew up watching shit like that. I'm not a sexualized person. I don't even I don't even like to walk around with my shirt off in the house and outside the house. And it's not because I'm uncomfortable with my body. It's just, I just don't like it. I was saying I'm not even a sexualized, over sexualized person. Yeah, I grew up watching that stuff. You can say I probably cuss too much. I grew up watching South Park, but hey, I just cuss too much because I like cussing. I like the curse. I think it's funny. I think it's funny. <laughs> uh, these words make me laugh, man. So that's why I say fuck shit damn. <laughs> Uh, it's it's crazy though because you have this stuff going on with this Atlanta shooting and you know it seems like a a common thing it's, it's always a shooting and people are like yeah and, they, and people watch it become politicized watch it become politicized you're, you're, you're Asian Americans so your Black Lives Matter and all these people are going to come out talking about racial injustice and stuff like that your, if, and even though it's Atlanta, which is, I believe is majority black, right? Because Atlanta seems to be the mecca for black people. And then you have black Americans. I hate this saying that phrase. Black Americans, the fuck is that? And then, and then you have, yeah, your, 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 your feminist groups can come out. See, everybody can join this game. Fuck, I think I got an eyelash in my eye. Shit, it's burning right now. Fuck me. But, so your 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 social justice warriors from racial from racial categories or whatever they can come out. Your sexist feminist people can come out. Uh, man, God forbid one of them comes out to be transgender or something like that. Those people can come out, but they they gonna hit all the different check boxes, right? For everything, so everybody can come and attack this dude Robert Long, the most generic basic name ever. <laughs> everybody come after him and stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm 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 gonna assume that he used. He probably used a handgun. Uh, he doesn't look like a, he doesn't look like it'll be a forty cal, not a high caliber. Probably gonna be a nine millimeter. 
they want to go after personal weapons. So I, I, I want to say he probably had an AR-15 somewhere in the trunk or something like that, but he didn't necessarily use it, maybe. They probably say that it was loaded up or I have a bunch of magazine clips. I wouldn't doubt if he was using a handgun, 9mm, uh, not even a huge size, maybe like a Glock. Maybe one of your more nano compact sizes. Um, let's see. I would, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised at times to some white supremacist group, some type of hate group, something like that, Proud Boys, whatever they want to label as a, the hate group of the month. Uh, they're going to call it, like I said, they're going to call it racial influence, even though, you know, he's driving a, a Hyundai, which is a South Korean made car. Uh, they're definitely going to go with a sex thing, sex addict, which is funny because, you know, Cardi being Megan Thee Stallion, sexualized themselves on primetime television, nobody said anything. But now this dude got a sex addiction. I don't think they'll go after the porn industry. I don't think they'll do that because, well, that's a billion dollar industry. And, well, they also use uh, human trafficking and child sex slaves in some of those porn industries as far as like Pornhub and stuff like that. Even Twitter profits off of uh, minors, child, uh, minor sex videos. So I don't know what route they're going to go with this per se, but we got a nice idea based on past events. And that's what I'm talking about because that's what, to me, screens manufactured. Because it's not unique. This shit, every individual is unique. Everyone has their own individual reason why they do something. Obviously, this seems like it's random. Therefore, they're going to make it seem, they're going to show that it's not random by showing that he just hates these type of people or whatever. I, I want to question... If Business Insider, I don't even know why they didn't even make an article about it, but they're going to go with the whole sex addiction route. Was he fucking these women? Because if, if it's a massage parlor, you can't do that there, right? That's illegal, right? That's illegal. So I wonder, would that be addressed? Would anybody talk about that? The, the illegal activities of the massage parlors? Or are we just going to not touch that because of their victims? And because they're women, now you have women's rights and stuff like that. There's a lot of different ways that you can go with this. And I wonder how they're going to go at this. And I'm just throwing out ideas because <laughs> this is the shit that happens in, in the world. This is your psychological operations, your MK Ultra. You, can, you can't even look on a guy's face. He kind of looks like, yeah. They always have that blank stare. That's not a stare of a killer. That's a stare of... The, they don't understand what the fuck is going on. What was it that uh the Batman shooting uh in Aurora County in Colorado? Or Aurora City, whatever in Colorado. A lot of shootings happen in Colorado, it seemed like it too, like mass shootings. It's that, I guess anything over three people is mass shootings. I don't even know anymore. I, I or maybe anything over four or five, I don't know. Everything's a mass shooting. We that 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 term kind of gets over exaggerated or overused, uh, definitely, I believe, miss you. You say mass, you want to talk about hundreds of people and stuff like that. Eight is not mass shooting, it's shootings, but uh, it's still bad. It's still bad. You come up with a different name or something like that. But it makes me, I say, yeah, it makes me wonder at which route they're going to go with this and all this stuff, how they're really going to break it down. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. This is something that, that I, I know I'll probably touch on more. I probably won't. It depends on what the details come out about it and how uh, ludicrous or ridiculous it might seem and some contradictions depending on how much time I'll spend on it. But this is definitely something to look at. I'll probably be tweeting out or, or and, and, and posting things on Gab about this as well. Of course, everybody's going to come out, oh, we denounce this violence, blah, blah. No shit. I don't understand why people are like, oh, you didn't denounce this. Nobody denounces violence. No shit. Of course you don't denounce the violence. Whether you like, whether you care about the violence or not, of course you're gonna say it's bad. Like, of course you're gonna say that. Like, whether you agree to it or not, of course you're gonna say that. Like, everyone's gonna say that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if you denounce it or not. We need to pay attention to this 
individual and figure out why this individual did this thing. And you cannot say this is an epidemic or a pandemic. You cannot say this is a serious issue or anything if this is an isolated incident. And, and out of 330 million people, if this happens three times a year, I don't think people understand that. That's actually good odds. You're talking about a point zero 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 something percent of it happening. That's good odd. Does it take away from this attractive moment and it's fucked up that someone lost their lives? Of course not. No shit. But understand the possibility of this happening. You can't make you can't be like, oh, this is a serious issue. I'm sorry, human nature is a serious issue then. Human psychology is a serious issue. Which is probably what they're trying to do anyways to make us all think and walk, talk, act shit the same. So they can control us. Because that'll be, that'll be the only reason is to get everybody to be the same. So they can control us. Because it's easy to control people if you got everyone thinking, walking, talking, and acting the same. As always, I stream the podcast Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If otherwise or anything changes, I'll tweet it out. I'll put it on Gab, something like that. You can go ahead and follow me on my social media, or, or rather my website, Damian Jackson 22 There's a WordPress website, so go ahead and follow that. You can follow, or if you want to be on WordPress, follow it, wherever the case may be. Uh, you can go to the top right corner under the menus tab, and you'll see a, a link for so, or a link to a page for social media links and my podcast links, so you can follow me there and, and find out other different platforms to listen to the podcast through instead of pod being you got apple podcast spotify podcast i'm on youtube i'm on odyssey i also started another channel on youtube and odyssey underdog gaming underdog underscore gaming i believe on odyssey underdog space gaming on youtube and that is just gaming just gaming clips that's it at least for right now no 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 audio commentary no none of that shit no, no, listen to me talk, nothing, no politics, no, my uh, outrageous, crazy opinions, none of that shit. It's funny because it's not outrageous or crazy to me. It should just make sense, but whatever. Some people might call it shock value. This is just my normal day thoughts that I speak out loud to people, but sometimes people don't really listen. So, but that channel, those channels rather are just for video game clips of shit from me and my son and my kids or whatever. And as the channel grows, or if it grows, then I'll probably take in clips from other people. But it was just something, nonetheless, I really originally started to want to do was to just strictly stream video games and talk about video games and, and put together video uh, videos based on video games and clips, stuff like that. But I kind of got away from that. Or I forgot about it. <laughs> it really was. I, say, cause I have videos say that, that on my YouTube channel now. Anyways, my first videos were video game stuff. And then I kind of forgot about those and whatnot. But now, now, uh, I'm going back to that and stuff. And it was just, like I said, no audio commentary. It's just clips are good, the good, the bad, the ugly. If the video game acts up, I'm clipping that. If the glitches in the video game, I'm clipping that. If I do something good in the video game, I'm clipping that. If someone does something good to me in the video game, I'm clipping that. I'm just uploading it. So nothing more than like 30, actually nothing more than 30 seconds. That's the way I got it set up on my Xbox anyways. So nothing more than 30 seconds, stuff like that. So check that out if you're into video games, whatnot. I'll try to upload videos as often as possible, but that also means I got to play a lot more goddamn video games as well, too. Whew. Got a lot of things I'm trying to do and stuff and stay busy. I'm building all this from the ground up. From the ground up. I am the brand. I'm building the, the podcast, the video content, the gaming and stuff like that. I'm building all this from the ground up. Maybe one day it'll be profitable. Maybe not. If anything, I enjoy what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. I already went to school for all this shit anyway. So at least I get to use my education and put it to good use. And, so, and I don't have to worry about a learning curve because I already learned the majority of the stuff anyway. So that's all good too. But yeah, definitely check me out on all those different mediums, uh, social media accounts and all the other stuff and blah, blah, blah. Have a good day. Enjoy time with your family and friends. Love each other. All that good shit. Spread love. There's a lot of negativity out there in the world. There's a lot of negativity in your own personal life amongst your friends and family. Find a way to separate yourself from that negativity. 
spread positivity, find positivity within yourself. You, the individual, are great, powerful, all that good shit. You're amazing. Go out there, be you. So until next time.